Welcome to my little corner of the internet, where we celebrate creativity and growth. Welcome, everyone, to our latest video where we'll be exploring 2006 Buffalo Bills season. The 2006 Buffalo Bills season was the franchise's 47th season as a football team, 37th in the National Football League NFL and first under both general manager Marv Levy and head coach Dick Uren. Levy, who previously coached the team from 1986 to 1997, leading them to four straight AFC championships and four straight Super Bowl appearances from 1990 to 1993, replaced Tom Donahoe, who was fired shortly after the end of the 2005 season, with hopes that his 11 full seasons as Bills head coach would improve a franchise that failed to make the playoffs during Donahoe's tenure. Uren, who previously coached the Chicago Bears from 1999 to 2003, replaced Mike Milarkey, who resigned shortly after Donahoe's firing, citing family reasons and disagreement over the direction of the organization. The Bills hoped to improve on their record from 2005, while also hoping to make the playoffs for the first time since 1999, but a loss to the Tennessee Titans eliminated the team from playoff contention extending their playoff drought to seven straight seasons, tying a record set from. For the second consecutive season, the Bills' opening day starting quarterback was J.P. Lozman. In this chapter, we'll be shedding light on NFL draft and its role in shaping our understanding. Notice the Bills acquired an additional first-round selection 26th overall, later revealed to be John McCargo as part of a draft day trade that sent their second round pick 42nd overall, later revealed to be Daniel Manning, to the Chicago Bears. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting schedule to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. Week date opponent result record venue recap 1 August 12 at Carolina Panthers L Bank of America Stadium recap 2 August 18 Cincinnati Bengals L Ralph Wilson Stadium recap 3 August 26 Cleveland Browns L Ralph Wilson Stadium recap for August 31 at Detroit Lions W Ford Field recap. In this part of the video, we'll be delving deeper into schedule and analyzing its key components. Weekdate Opponent Result Record Venue Recap 1 September 10 at New England Patriots L Gillette Stadium Recap 2 September 17 at Miami Dolphins W Dolphins Stadium Recap 3 September 24 New York Jets L Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 4 October 1 Minnesota Vikings W Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 5 October 8 at Chicago Bears L Soldier Field Recap 6 October 15 at Detroit Lions L Ford Field Recap 7 October 22 New England Patriots L. Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 8 by 9 November 5 Green Bay Packers W. Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 10 November 12 at Indianapolis Colts L. R. C. A. Dome Recap 11 November 19 at Houston Texans W. Reliant Stadium Recap 12 November 26 Jacksonville Jaguars W. Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 13 December 3 San Diego Chargers L. Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 14 December 10 at New York Jets W. W. Giants Stadium Recap 15 December 17 Miami Dolphins W. Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 16 December 24 Tennessee Titans L. Ralph Wilson Stadium Recap 17 December 31 at Baltimore Ravens L. Mount Bank Stadium Recap Brace yourself for a deep dive into Week 1 at New England Patriots as we explore its impact and relevance in our evolving narrative. The Bills opened the regular season on the road against the first of their three divisional rivals, the New England Patriots, and got off to a fast start, as on the very first play, Toque Spikes sacked Tom Brady, causing a fumble recovered by London Fletcher Baker for a five-yard TD. The Patriots tied the game up at on a nine-yard pass from Brady to Troy Brown. The Bills would regain the lead on a 53-yard FG by Ryan Lindell. In the second quarter, Anthony Thomas would make the score at halftime with an 18-yard run. However, the Bills continued their late-game struggles from 2005, 
as they gave up 12 unanswered points in the second half a 17-yard pass from Brady to Kevin Falk, a 32-yard FG by Steven Goskowski and a safety by Ty Warren with 8.33 remaining in the fourth quarter, dropping the Bills to to start the season. Brace yourself for a captivating discussion on Week 2 at Miami Dolphins as we explore its nuances and implications. For Week 2, the Bills traveled to Dolphin Stadium to take on the second of their three divisional rivals, the Miami Dolphins. The Bills managed to get the only score of the first half, a 33-yard field goal by kicker Ian Lindell in the first quarter. It wasn't until the third quarter that the Bills were to score again when quarterback J.P. Lozman threw a four-yard pass to Josh Reed, while Lindell kicked a pair of fts, a 45-yarder and a 43-yarder. Even though the Dolphins did manage to score in the fourth quarter on a 23-yard pass from Dount Kupper to Chris Chambers with a failed two-point conversion, the Bills' defense dominated the game, sacking Kupper seven times along with two forced fumbles and blocking a punt, improving the Bills to. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting Week 3 versus New York Jets to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. Dressed up in their as throwback jerseys, the Bills played their Week 3 home opener against their last divisional rival, the New York Jets. Buffalo started off with J.P. Lozman throwing a 51-yard pass to Roscoe Parrish for the only score in the first quarter. In the second quarter, the Jets tied the game up with a 3-yard run by Kevin Barlow. The Bills managed to get a 36-yard FG by Rian Lindell, but the Jets managed to take the lead as Chad Pennington completed a one-yard TD pass to Chris Baker within the closing seconds of the half. In the second half, the Bills fell behind as Victor Hobson returned a Buffalo fumble 32 yards for a touchdown, which would be the only score of the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, the Bills tried to close the gap, as Lindell kicked a 28-yard field goal. However, the Jets increased their lead with Cedric Houston getting a five-yard run. The Bills would get another score for a 12-yard Lozman run. Even though the Bills recovered their inside kick, they went three and out to end any more scoring threats, dropping to get ready for an enlightening exploration as we dig into Week 4, Minnesota Vikings and understand its role in the broader context. Looking to bounce back from a tough home opening loss to the New York Jets, the Bills took on the first of their four NFC North rivals, the Minnesota Vikings. In the first quarter, Buffalo got a small deficit as kicker Ryan Longwell kicked a 37-yard FG for the only score of the quarter. In the second quarter, the Bills scored on a Willis McGahey one-yard run. Afterwards, Minnesota got a last-second FG by Longwell, this one from 49 yards out. In the third quarter, Buffalo pulled ahead as J.P. Lozman completed an 8-yard pass to Peerless Price for the only score of the period. In the fourth quarter, Rian Lindell kicked a 28-yard FG. However, Brad Johnson completed a 29-yard pass to Marcus Robinson, but Buffalo prevented the two-point conversion and ran the clock out, giving the Bills their first home victory of the year and improving to. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore Week 5 at Chicago Bears from a different angle. Looking for their second road victory of the season, the Bills traveled to Soldier Field to take on the second of their four NFC North rivals, the Chicago Bears, in Dick Uren's first return to Chicago since being fired at the end of the Chicago Bears season. From the start, Buffalo was in trouble, as Robbie Gould kicked two fs in the first quarter a 42-yarder and a 43-yarder. Then, in the second quarter, three straight scores came from the Besh and eight-yard pass from Rex Grossman to Bernard Berrien, a one-yard run from Cedric Benson and a 15-yard pass from Grossman to Rashid Davis that put the Bills in a deep hole. In the third quarter, Gould put up another FG for Chicago, this time from 32 yards out, while in the fourth quarter, Gould would kick a 41-yard FG and Benson would get another one-yard run. The Bills would finally get on the board, as J.P. Lozman completed a five-yard strike to Lee Evans, ending the Bears' 11-quarter streak of not allowing their opponents to score a TD going back to the fourth quarter of the Bears' victory against the Detroit Lions in Week 2, but the damage was already done, as the loss dropped the Bills to 
as we enter this new phase, let's analyze week six at Detroit Lions from different angles and evaluate its significance. The Bills flew to Ford Field to take on the third of their four NFC North rivals, the Detroit Lions. From the start, the winless Lions were dominated the first quarter, as kicker Jason Hansen kicked a 43-yard FG, while Kevin Jones got a 7-yard run. In the second quarter, Buffalo got into the game, as J.P. Lozman completed a 44-yard pass to Roscoe Parrish. However, Detroit responded, as John Kittner completed a 28-yard TD pass to Roy Williams. The Bills would get kicker Ian Lindell to get a 53-yard field goal to end the half. After a scoreless third quarter, Lions kicker Hansen got a 29-yard field goal, putting Detroit up. The Bills tried to catch up, as Lozman completed a 4-yard pass to Ryan Neufeld, but the deficit proved to be a little too much, as the Lions ended up getting their first win of the season at the Bills' expense, dropping the Bills to... Now, let's redirect our focus towards Week 7 versus New England Patriots and discover its significance in our narrative. Coming off two straight road losses to an NFC North team, the Bills returned home for a rematch with the New England Patriots. In the first meeting in Week 1, New England came back to win thanks to late-game struggles by the Bills. This time, however, it wasn't even close. In the first quarter, the Patriots took an early lead with the first of Corey Dillon's two runs, an eight-yarder. Kikari and Lindell would get a 40-yard field goal, but the Patriots wouldn't allow Buffalo to score, as Dillon got his second of the game, a 12-yarder. After a scoreless second quarter, the Patriots continued to make the game difficult for the Bills as in the third quarter, Tom Brady threw a 35-yard pass to Chad Jackson for the only score of the period. In the fourth quarter, Lindell would get another field goal, this one from 46 yards out, but the damage was already done, as Brady put the icing on the game with his second pass, this one a five-yarder to Doug Gabriel, sweeping the Bills for a third straight year and dropping them to heading into the bye week. In this chapter, we'll be shedding light on Week 9 versus Green Bay Packers and its role in shaping our understanding. Coming off their bye week, the Bills stayed home for a Week 9 matchup with their final NFC North rival, the Green Bay Packers. In the first quarter, even though Willis McGahee left with injured ribs, Kikari and Lindell kicked a 28-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, Buffalo's defense joined in the scoring party as London Fletcher Baker returned an interception 17 yards for a touchdown for the only score of the period. In the third quarter, Brett Faber hooked up with Donald Driver on a one-yard pass for the only score of the period. In the fourth quarter, Packers kicker Dave Rayner kicked a 49-yard FG to tie the game up. The Bills increased their margin as J.P. Lozman completed a 43-yard pass to Lee Evans. Afterwards, a 76-yard interception returned by Co Simpson set up a 14-yard run by Anthony Thomas, improving the Bills to... In the following segment, we'll be examining Week 10 at Indianapolis Colts in greater detail. Fresh off their victory over the Packers, the Bills flew out to the RCA Dome for a Week 10 matchup with the Indianapolis Colts. Much like they did in the season opener against the Patriots, Buffalo got off to a fast start in the first quarter with Kikari and Lindell making a 22-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, however, Indianapolis struck back with Peyton Manning completing a one-yard pass to Reggie Wayne. The Colts would follow that up with kicker Adam Vinatieri kicking a 31-yard FG. The Bills' defense did make a stand, though, as Terrence Midi returned a fumble 68 yards for a touchdown. In the third quarter, Indianapolis regained the lead with Joseph Adé completing a five-yard run. Buffalo would respond with Lindell making a 30-yard FG. In the fourth quarter, the Bills drew closer with Lindell's 43-yard FG and had a chance to take the lead late in the game, let alone win, but a 41-yard try went wide right, not only dropping the Bills to, but last place in the AFC East. Get ready for an exciting part as we dive into Week 11 at Houston Texans. 
This Week 11 matchup against the Texans was expected to be a boring affair, but it was anything but. The first quarter saw a dominating offensive performance by Lee Evans, who caught six passes for 205 yards and a pair of 83-yard touchdowns, falling just five yards short of the NFL mark for most yards receiving in a quarter of 210 set by Gre Ismail in 1999. However, Houston was not intimidated and kept the game close going into halftime. In the second half, the Bills' offense slowed down greatly, but Houston kept flying, mostly on the arm of David Carr, who tied the NFL record for most consecutive completions in a game with 22. Dunder Robinson intercepted a Lozman pass and ran it in for an easy score, giving the Texans a edge that held until the final seconds, when Lozman led the Bills down the field and hit Peerless Price for the game-winning nine-yard catch in the back of the end zone with 12.09 remaining the play was reviewed and upheld for the victory in a game where Lozman set a career high for passing yardage with 340 and Evans set a new franchise record with 265 yards receiving. With the win, the Bills improved to Fadavid Kahan off to Samkin God Octigzans QB David Kahan's off to Samkin Godo. Firehouston Texans advanced to one yard line versus Buffalo Bills 2006 11 Op Godo advances to Buffalo's one yard line. Fire Samkin Godo rush versus Bills Op Godo rushes. Firehouse and Texans goal line stand versus Buffalo Bills 2006 11 Ox Texans attempt to rush at the goal line. Fire Robert Royal and Angelo Crowell Robert Royal and Angelo Crowell. Fire some Aiken some Aiken at Houston. Fire Anthony Thomas and Shord Williams Ox Anthony Thomas and Shord Williams Fire Brad Cheslick Sam Aiken Ashen Uberty Brad Cheslick Sam Aiken and Ashen Uberty. Phil Anthony Thomas warms up of Anthony Thomas warming up. In the next phase, we'll be immersing ourselves in the realm of Week 12 versus Jacksonville Jaguars and exploring its real-world applications. With the momentum of a late-game victory against Houston and the return of Willis McGahey, who had missed the previous three weeks with rib injuries, the Bills took an early lead and held off the Jaguars at the end. After Jacksonville scored with 12.34 remaining and after a questionable squib kick, J.P. Lozman threw a pass down the sideline to Roscoe Parrish who kept his toes in just enough to set up a game-winning Rian Lindell 42-yard FG as time expired. Harish had earlier made the game's biggest play of the game when he had an 81-yard punt return in the third quarter. With their second straight victory, the Bills improved to... Now, let's delve into the intricacies of Week 13, San Diego Chargers and explore its various aspects. Keeping some sim playoff hopes alive, the Bills stayed home, donned their throwback jerseys again and faced a fierce Week 13 challenge against the San Diego Chargers. In the first quarter, the Chargers struck first with kicker Nate Kidding getting a 42-yard FG, while Ladanian Tomlinson got a 51-yard run. In the second quarter, Buffalo continued to struggle as Philip Rivers completed an 11-yard pass to Antonio Gates for the only score of the period. In the third quarter, the Bills scored with J.P. Lozman completing a 6-yard pass to Robert Royal, while Willis McGahey got a 2-yard run. However, in the fourth quarter, Tomlinson got his second touchdown run of the day, a 2-yarder. A 6-yard pass from Lozman to Peerless Price closed the gap but a failed and Sid kick sealed any chance of a comeback victory. With the loss, the Bills dropped to. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into the fascinating world of Week 14 at New York Jets. Hoping to avoid being swept by their AFC East rival and keep their playoff hopes alive all at the same time, the Bills met the Jets in the Meadowlands. Willis McGahey extended his string of 100-yard rushing games versus the Jets to 5 with 125 yards on 16 carries, including a 57-yard run in the first quarter. After owing a 10-yard pass from Chad Pennington to Labour News Coles and a Mike Nugent FG, the Bills broke the game open with a 77-yard J.P. Lozman pass to Lee Evans and a 58-yard interception return by Nate Clements. The Jets cut their deficit to after a Nugent FG on the ensuing possession, but would end up scoreless for the rest of the game. Meanwhile, 
The Bills' defense held the Jets in check as a Pennington fumble in the third quarter set up another J.P. Lozman pass, this time to Robert Royal. The Bills would add a FG of their own in the fourth quarter to extend their lead to. With the win, not only did the Bills improve to, but they mathematically remained in playoff contention, two games behind current wildcard occupants Jacksonville and Cincinnati. As we enter this new phase, let's uncover the impact of Week 15 versus Miami Dolphins on our broader topic. In order to remain in contention for the playoffs, the Bills had to defeat and sweep the Dolphins, which they did in convincing and dominating fashion. J.P. Lozman played well with 200 yards passing, three touchdowns and no interceptions. However, his counterpart, Jerry Harrington, was ineffective, throwing for only 98 yards with two interceptions and achieved a zero passer rating. After a scoreless first quarter, Lozman threw a 33-yard touchdown pass to Robert Royal, putting the Bills ahead into halftime. In the third quarter, Lozman threw a 27-yard pass to Josh Reed, putting the Bills up by two touchdowns. In the final quarter, Lozman threw another TD pass, this time a 21-yarder to Lee Evans. Miami had the ball on Buffalo's one-yard line with 12.06 remaining. Looking for a touchdown, Cleo Lemon threw a pass intended for Chris Chambers but was batted down at the line of scrimmage by Ryan Denny, keeping the Dolphins scoreless. With the win, the Bills improved to. Let's zoom in on Week 16 versus Tennessee Titans and understand its implications. After the victory over Miami, the Bills stayed home for a Week 16 intra-conference game with the Tennessee Titans. The Titans, like the Bills, were and also hunting for a wildcard berth. In the first quarter, Buffalo scored first with Kickery and Lindell getting a 21-yard FG. Tennessee would respond with Vince Young completing a 22-yard pass to Bobby Wade. The Bills came back with Wes McGee's one-yard TD run. In the second quarter, the Titans regained the lead with kicker Rob Biren is getting a 42-yard and a 20-yard FG. Afterwards, the Bills came back with Lindell kicking a 36-yard and a 45-yard FG. Then, Tennessee went back into the lead with Young's 36-yard run. Buffalo would score with another 21-yard FG from Lindell, this one before halftime. In the third quarter, J.P. Lozman completed a 37-yard pass to Lee Evans and afterwards Lindell kicked a 24-yard FG. In the fourth quarter, the Titans won the game with Yum completing a 29-yard pass to Brandon Jones and Biran his fifth FG of the game, a 30-yarder. J.P. Lozman led the Bills on one final drive down to the Titans' 28-yard line, but driving against the wind that was gusting up to 20 miles per hour, the Bills elected not to try a potential game-winning FG, sealing the game for the Titans. With the loss, not only did the Bills fall to in their final home game of the season, but they were also eliminated from playoff contention heading into the season finale. Get ready for an exciting part as we dive into Week 17 at Baltimore Ravens. J.P. Lozman threw for 237 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions, one of which a pick six. Willis McGahey rushed for 23 yards on 11 carries. Lee Evans had seven receptions for 145 yards and the only score for Buffalo, a 44-yard TD. In the first quarter, Matt Stover made a 26-yard field goal, bringing the Ravens up at the end of the first. Just before halftime, Stover made another field goal, this one from 37 yards out for a halftime lead. In the third quarter, Stover made his third field goal of the day, bringing the Ravens up. After Evans' TD, Lozman threw a pass that was intercepted by Chris McAllister and returned for a touchdown. In the fourth quarter, Stover made his fourth and final field goal that increased the Ravens' lead to. With the loss, the Bills finished the season at, although it was an improvement over last year's record. If you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to drop them in the comments section.